You will know Troubled heart you'll know Every life has reason For I made it so Oh, oh you will know Lonely heart, you know, every life, every life has meaning, for I made it so. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mental House with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Uh, these are one. This is one of those subjects that uh, I have to talk about, and it gets um, even more filling uh, when you start talking about the uh, black community and our loyalty to religion, religious figures. I should say. I was very disturbed by a young pastor from a very prominent church here that saw his son dressed up uh, as transgender and he chased him down the street uh, so he could beat him down. And he makes a habit out of this behavior. He's a pastor. He's, a, he's not a pastor. He's an assistant minister. But he makes a concerted effort to look for his son going down the street so he can jump out of his car and beat him down. Now, to some of y'all, y'all might be like, yeah, that's old school, that's old school. But in my heart, I don't I don't see no God in it. And he couldn't teach me anything. He couldn't teach any sane and rational person anything other than the how to be a barbarian. And a lot of us have I become so accustomed to being treated like barbarians that we think it's normal. All that crazy stuff, spare the rod, spoil the child, put it in the Bible for the slave master to beat you. And he didn't beat his child, but he beat us. And so we have a real, real strict loyalty to that Bible and the beating of our children, whether it's with ironing cords, whether it's with, uh, you know, just whatever we can get our hands on, beat the hell out of our children. So what happens when you have a parent and when you grow up with a person that um, projects that type of anger and madness up on you, it really ripens you up for the preacher. For him to lay his magic on you and his abuse tactics, which you are, would be very much accustomed to at that point. So it, it makes it very easy. You easy prey, in other words. So this story that I was reading, I just thought about, you know, we're quick to go in on the Catholic Church. And nobody wants to talk about us in general because we hold these uh, preachers are such in high regard, even when they sexually abuse in the congregation and every woman in the um, church. So this story out of Memphis, Tennessee is, um, you know, it, it was very interesting to me because mainstream media didn't want to talk about it. And anyway, the leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention published a list of ministers accused of sexual misconduct. Okay? So they... They, they, um, more than a half a dozen of these ministers have tied to the ties to the Mid South. So they put a list out. The following information is from the Southern Baptist Convention's alleged abuser list. In 2021, a grand jury handed down indictments of rape and three counts of sexual battery by an authority figure against Stephen C. Hanley, 47. 
for assaulting a 15-year-old boy. Hanley was a former pastor at Walnut Grove Baptist Church in Cordova. He registered as a sex offender in Tennessee. Haney, Haney was convicted of a 2003 sexual battery by an authority figure and of a 21 rape in state court. Edward Earl Prince, Edward Earl Eddie Prince, a pastor at Oak Grove Baptist Church in Hernando, Mississippi, was arrested on possession of child pornography charges. He listed as a sex offender in Mississippi for a 2013 conviction of child exploitation. Andy Savage, a teaching pastor at High Point Church in Memphis, a non-denominational congregation, resigned after admitting to the congregation that in 1998 as a youth minister in Woodland Parkland Baptist Church near Houston, now known as Stonebridge Church, he had a sexual incident with a high school student. Since the statute of limitations had expired, no charges were filed. Larry Singleton, a pastor at Bay Springs Baptist Church in Abbeville, Mississippi, was sentenced to 30 years in prison for sexually battery of a boy. Bay Springs Baptist Church is associated with the Southern Baptist Convention. Singleton was Singleton volunteered as an extension campus of Gateway Christian Schools, sponsored by the independent Gateway Baptist Church, Memphis. Demarcus Smith, a pastor at Oak Hill Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, was sentenced to 85 months in prison on child pornography possession charges. In 2007, Lou Cook, a youth pastor was indicted on rape and aggravated sexual battery charges involving an 8-year-old girl and a 16-year-old girl. Cook fled the country. In 2015, he fled to China, Morocco, and Albania after being indicted on sex crimes charges in Shelby County. Shout out to Shelby County. In 2015, he was brought back from Albany, from Albania by U.S. Marshals and convicted in Tennessee of coercion or enticement of a minor for having transported a juvenile with the intent of engaging in illegal sexual activity and sentenced to 138 months. He is serving out his sentence in federal prison. Now, Lou Cook must be a Caucasian man because 138 months well, let me, let me stop. In 2006, Paul Williams, an assistant pastor, minister of prayer and special projects of Bellevue Baptist Church in Cordova, admitted he was guilty of sexually abusing his son. Bellevue leaders told the church Williams had committed a moral failure that required his leave of absence in an investigation into his allegations. Pastor Steve Gaines told the congregation that Williams had confessed to the misconduct uh, and they sentenced uh, conduct uh, that he confessed, I'm sorry, to the misconduct to him six months earlier. He received criticism for not reporting the abuse. Williams was later fired. Yeah, Y'all see, the list goes on and on. These are um, very serious allegations. Larry Michael Berkeley, a pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church in Harrison, Arkansas, and a former pastor at Victory Baptist Church in Hinton, Tennessee, were arrested for abuse of over a dozen boys as young as 14. Police say he plied supplied them with alcohol and marijuana and showed them porn to gain compliance. Berkeley was convicted of 16 crimes, including four counts of aggregated statutory rape, four counts of sexual battery by an authority figure. He was also, I mean, he was sentenced to 33 years and incarcerated in Tennessee. He is required 
to register as a sex offender. Then you got Timothy Neal Byers, a youth minister, minister of youth, uh, education, and music for the Spring Hill Baptist Church in Dyersburg, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And he was arrested on charges of rape, sexual battery, and authority by an authority figure and aggravated statutory rape, 14 and 19 year old sisters. Byers is a registered sex offender in Tennessee for the rape and attempted uh, to commit sexual battery. The crimes that were reported in two different cities on two consecutive nights in November. Byers served two years in prison. The list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and, and, you know, then you got a Tyler Ransom. A youth minister in term at Inglewood Baptist Church in Jackson, Tennessee. He's accused of contacting four minors and attempted to persuade them to engage in a sexual activity. Well, he is now registered as a sex offender. All of these are preacher men. All of these are preacher men. Lovers of God. Hallelujah. This is who this is. I mean, my point being, and not to um, rag on them, is that y'all out here in the streets talking about what people do, how they're an abomination, what needs to happen to these people, especially if they're transgender. And y'all sitting up in the church committing the most heinous crimes it is because it's crimes against children. And like I said, most adults set their children up for these type of relationships, for these type of abuse. You get them good and right for the predators outside your home. For the bullies outside your home. I always say, I wish I would have knew, um, you know, what I know now when I was raising my children. I wish I would have knew the things that I know now because I made a lot of mistakes when I was living beneath the veil. Like a lot of y'all are living beneath the veil right now. The thing about it is a lot of y'all don't want to talk about it, but what happens is we set these children up to be raped, to be get with some pimp, to get with somebody that don't mean them no good and to take advantage of every little pure spark, spark that might have been in that person. I mean, 2015, Nathaniel Hull Jr., preacher's son at First Baptist in West Helena, Arkansas, was arrested for the rape of a 13-year-old girl. And then he gave her a baby. Michael Shane Casbella, youth pastor at North Corinth Baptist Church and principal of North Corinth Christian Academy. He was arrested for and convicted for fondling, fondling, sexual battery, and exploitation of a child. He's, he's serving an eight-year prison sentence. Casbella was arrested in Houston. Um by the marshals because I guess he was he had left town there's a 300 page report released that found organization ignored claims of sexual abuse by ministers and church leaders for over two decades what we gonna say about the Catholic Church we really ain't got nothing. I know a lot of people, the first sexual experience they had was in church with some predator. Y'all don't want to talk about that. No one want to talk about that, do you? But it's true. It's true. At least five people I know, I can at least say 
at least five. And I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. The thing about it is we can tell the truth about it. Hmm. And people get mad and talk about James Cleveland and a lot of them other predators that was in church. And people get very highly upset about it. That they use a pulpit or their talents and stuff to lure people in. And pretty much take advantage and steal their souls. I'm sorry if you don't like it. But it's true. Anyway. I want to know how many of y'all out there can relate to what I'm talking about. Uh, it's church abuse. And if you heard this story on mainstream. With all these black pastors up here on a list. A predator damn list. That they got circling around the a Baptist church. Circling around with the hierarchy, letting them know that, hey, look, these people are on notice. They stay with sexual predators. <laughs> I'd like to know what you think. If you like what you hear, subscribe, share the video. I'll see you in the next.